with me tonight. Father, we come tonight and just thank you for allowing us to come out to your house and to worship. We're just going to ask you to be with us tonight, Father, and just guide and direct us and just uh, help us as we go about, Father, to, uh, to learn from your word tonight, Father. Just help us to lift our voices in song tonight and just help us to open ourselves up to the work of the Holy Spirit in our hearts tonight. And I ask you to bless our offering, Father. Bless those that can give and those that cannot, Father. It's not about money. It's about you, Father. And we're just going to ask you to bless each and every person that's here and bless their families tonight. And we just thank you in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen.
I'm sorry. <laughs> I think I did it. My bad. Let me give another one. Ah, that was my bad, I believe. No, it was. I'll take half credit. To God be the glory, great things he hath done. So love he the world that he gave us his son, who yielded his life and atonement for sin. I 
only Terry there None other has ever known He speaks in the sound of his voice It's so sweet the bird huster singing And the melody that he gave trouble with my hands and feet, you know, drawing. 
legs drawing. And both my hands started drawing, and I don't mean uh, artwork. It, 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 just like it, my thumb and fingers start going ways that you can't make them stop. And it wouldn't stop. Usually I'd put that glove on and tighten it up real tight or put a cold rag on it and kind of ease it up. But this time it just kept on and on and on. It just like I had my hand in a vice and they was crushing it. And I sat there and I just about started crying. And I finally, I give, I give it up. And I said, God, you got to help me. This is pain. I can't bear no more. And then all of a sudden, just uh, it, it, it quit hurting. And there was a peace come over me. You know, I, I was trying to make it quit myself, and I, I, didn't, I wasn't calling on God. And I believe he made it keep hurting until I did call on him. And there, then it was just a peace come over me. And I sat there and remember that song, you know, this is my story, this is my song. Just praise God in everything we do. Give him praise. And just praise his name. Let's sing that last verse over if you don't hear. <clears throat> Perfect submission, all is at rest. I am my Savior and happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above, filled with his goodness. Lost in his love. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Once I was bound by sin galling fetters, chained like a slave, I struggled in vain. For I was saved a glorious freedom when Jesus broke my fetters in twain. Glorious freedom. Wonderful freedom, no more in chains of sin I repine. Jesus the glorious emancipator, now and forever he shall be mine. Freedom from all the carnal affection, Freedom from envy, hatred, and strife. Freedom from vain and worldly ambitions. Freedom from all that saddens my life. Glorious freedom, wonderful freedom. No more in chains of Sin I repine, Jesus the glorious emancipator, now and forever he shall be mine. Freedom from pride and all sinful follies, freedom from love and glitter and gold. Freedom from evil, temper and anger, glorious freedom, rapture untold. Glorious freedom, wonderful freedom, no more in chains of sin I repine. Jesus a glorious emancipator, now and forever he shall be mine freedom from fear with all of his torments freedom from care with all of his pain freedom in christ my 
blessed Redeemer, He who has rent my fetters in twain. Glorious freedom, wonderful freedom, no more in chains of sin I repine. Jesus, a glorious emancipator, now and forever he shall be mine. In the dark of the midnight have I all hid my face. While the storms howl about me And there's no hiding place Miss the crash of the thunder Precious Lord, hear my cry Keep me safe till the storm passes by Till the storm passes over Till the thunder sounds no more Till the clouds roll forever From the sky Hold me fast, let me stand In the hollow of thy hand Keep me safe Till the storm passes by Many times Satan whispered, There is no need to try, For there's no end of sorrow, And there's no hope by and by. But I know thou art with me, And tomorrow I'll rise, Where the storm never darkened the sky. Till the storm passes over Till the thunder sounds no more Till the clouds roll forever From the sky Hold me fast, let me stand In the hollow of thy hand Keep me safe Till the storm passes by when the night long night has ended and the storms come no more let me stand in thy presence on that bright peaceful shore in that land where the tempest never comes lord may i dwell with thee Till the storm passes by Till the storm passes over Till the thunder sounds no more Till the clouds roll forever From the sky Hold me fast, let me stand In the hollow of your hand Keep me safe till the storm passes by. Your Bibles to Galatians chapter 4. We're going to be uh, pretty much picking up where we left off this morning. And when we're looking at Galatians chapter 4, we're going to be um, looking at verses 17 through 18 tonight. But it's really, in a lot of ways, it is a continuation of the of what we were talking about this morning in verses fifteen and sixteen. And and, and what we're, remember what we're talking about here is Paul is kind of admonishing these Galatians, and he is calling them really to examine themselves and to and to try to discover within themselves why he is picking up on the fact that they're losing their joy and why they're so angry and why they're kind of um, railing against Paul. And and so he wants them to kind of look at that, and he wants them to kind of. 
examine um, what's going on within them, what there is that's wrong within them so that they can understand and, and hopefully fix the problem before it's, it's too late for them. And I'll just read a, a couple of the verses again that from this morning in verse 15 and just uh, kind of some highlights of it. He says, What has happened to your joy? And then in verse 16 he says, Have I now become your enemy by telling you the truth? And we got really, we got pretty deep into the joy aspect of it and we got into a little bit concerning the whole whole thing about, about why they were angry about the joy part of it, but we didn't really talk too much about the truth that uh, Paul was telling them that was causing them to get angry and was causing these issues that they were having. And I want to kind of um, kind of kind of dig in on that just a little bit before we get into our scripture for tonight. But um, typically when we think about somebody being angry, it's, it's usually a defense mechanism that we have. When we're angry and when we react out of angry, we're acting um, out, out of defense. Somebody has done something, somebody has said something, somebody has, has kind of rubbed us the wrong way and we react in a certain way and that reaction is usually it, it's fueled by that anger. And sometimes we don't even realize what we've done until after it's happened. And, and, and out in the world a lot of times that will manifest itself in physical assaults. People fighting and hitting each other and things like that. Now I've heard stories that sometimes that happens in the church too but most of the time when we're talking about anger manifesting itself in the church we're talking about those verbal assaults and those you know, those, those words that hurt. And a lot of times uh, words hurt a whole lot more than somebody punching you in the eye. And, and, and so and, and that's what we're talking about when we're talking about this anger here. And then what happens though is there's a whole lot of different things that go on after the incident and so, and things um, and people will, will try to kind of just move on and just kind of forget about it and just kind of a lot of times with sin too they'll kind of sweep it under the rug just act like nothing ever happened and a lot of times it's out of embarrassment it's out of just really not knowing what to do after the situation and, and sometimes it's out of pride here and, and so Paul here when he's dealing with this situation what he's doing is he's trying to share the gospel that is the truth that he's trying to share with these people and it's the truth that that they're not going in the right direction that they are abandoning the gospel and you got to understand and realize that the people that he's sharing this message with and, and these that are going to be reading this letter a lot of them have already given themselves over to these Judaizers they've already kind of adopted their way of thinking and their way of life and the way that that they see things and so and so they're going to be upset they're going to be angry at what Paul's saying and they're not going to like it one bit because Paul's telling them you are wrong you're wrong in the way that you're handling this you're wrong in the way that you're interpreting the gospel you're wrong in the way that you're actually living out the gospel he says it's not all about that stuff and they don't like hearing that and what they're trying to do is tell Paul to shut up and, and because they because they're under conviction, the Holy Spirit has them all under conviction because he, the Holy Spirit is trying to tell them you're going the wrong way and they're not listening. And what they think is if if they can just shut Paul up, then the Holy Spirit will go away, Paul will go away, that conviction will go away, and all their their joy will return because they they're they're thinking that that they're that, that they're kind of down in the dumps because because the Holy Spirit's putting this conviction on them and they think well just go away and everything will be back to normal, everything will be good, everything will be okay. And that's not how it works. Uh, but they're wanting Paul to shut up and so that's why they're responding in anger and they're railing against Paul and they're saying no Paul you can't do this you're wrong and all these things that they, that they have going on and we know that Paul does not shut up does he? He just keeps on and on and on and keeps pushing and pushing and pushing. And I'll tell you, the lesson that we can get out of that is if we're proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ, then we need to keep on and on and on. We need to keep pushing and pushing and pushing. No matter how much they try to tell us to shut up, no matter how much they try to make us shut up, keep pushing anyway. Just push on through. Just go on through and keep sharing the gospel with people because that is our mission. Our mission is not to please people. Our mission is not to... Is not to uh, to please the world our mission is to serve God and our mission is to share the gospel and so we've got to be willing to do that we've got to be willing to endure the hardships and endure the hard times and go through all the things that we have to go to, through for the sake of the gospel and so Paul's trying to tell them he's trying to get them to that place remember we talked about this morning Paul saying you know first I became like you and now you must become like me he's trying to get them to that place to where they're acting and they're thinking like Paul thinks where 
Lord. Everything is worthless besides Christ. Everything is consequential besides Christ. That's the most important thing to Paul is Jesus Christ. And he's trying to get them to understand that as well and trying to get them to embrace that as well. But they don't want to do it. They're having a hard time with that and they're, and they're railing against him. And, then, and, so, and he's having a hard time getting them to understand the importance of what they're supposed to be doing and what they're supposed to be learning. But, and that kind of brings us up to our scripture for tonight. That kind of finishes out this morning and brings us up to where we need to be tonight. But in Galatians chapter 4, verse 17, it reads this. It says, those people are zealous um, to win you over, but for no good. Listen to that. They're, those people are zealous to win you over, but for no good. He says, what they want is to alienate you from us so that you may be zealous for them. He says, it is fine to be zealous provided the purpose is good. He says, and to be so always and not just when I am with you. And that last part, we're going to get to that in a minute, but I want us to pay attention to that. He says, if we're going to be zealous and be zealous for God, he said, do it always. Not just when I'm with you, with you or not just when other people are watching. He says, be always. Pray with me tonight. Father, we come again. I thank you for our singing tonight. I thank you for the, uh, the time that we have. I thank you for the Holy Spirit being with us. The Holy Spirit guiding us and directing us and helping us and, and showing us the way tonight, Father. I just ask that you open us up. Unstop our ears, Father. Open our eyes so that we can hear you speaking to us. So that you can penetrate deep within our heart and our soul tonight, Father. And that you can bring out what it is that you want us to have. What it is you want us to understand. How you want us to respond, Father. Give us the strength and the power to be be able to respond to you tonight, Father. Remove any hindrance, anything that would stand in the way of you working in us tonight. And we just thank you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen. All right, all right. Let's get into it here. We're talking about being zealous. And we're going to talk about being zealous for the Lord. But uh, I, the title that I gave this is being zealous for no good. And that's the first thing that Paul talks about is them being zealous for no good. And you know, I talked about you know them being kind of upset over everything that's going on and them being zealous about everything. And, and, and what I, I kind of when I was reading this and kind of studying this out, I was trying to get in my mind what this would look like in our world today. And the one thing that came to my mind was Facebook. Now, and, and, uh, about, and most of you know what Facebook is. And most of you know what some of the things on Facebook is nothing but arguments going back and forth, ain't it? Somebody will put something on there and somebody else won't agree with what they say and they'll want to argue their point and then, then the other person will come back and they'll argue their point and they'll just argue back and forth. And, and, it, and there's, it makes no sense of it. Nobody's right, but everybody is trying so hard to be right and trying so hard to convince somebody else that their point of view is the right point of view and, and it turns everybody off. And that's kind of what Paul's dealing with here. Because what everything he tries to tell them about the gospel, they're coming back at him with something different. And you got one group over here coming back at him. You got another group over here coming back at him. And none of them are right because Paul is trying to give them the gospel. And the gospel is the only thing that's right. But these arguments, you all see it, they get heated, don't they? They get tense. People get upset and get mad. Oh, man, they'll get mad. You'd think that if they could come through that computer, they're going to they're gonna come get you. But, but that's what they do. And, and, and so, and it's the same thing going on here. But in verse 17 again, he writes this. He says, and he's, and he's trying to kind of calm them down and give them some wisdom of God. And he says in verse 17, those people are zealous to win you over. And he's talking about the Judaizers. He said they're zealous to win you over. He says, but for no good. He says, what they want is to alienate you from us so that you may be zealous for them. So there's two things he says there. He says, one, they, their motivation is to, one, to win you over to their point of view, to their side. And he says, it's no good. It's of no good because it's not of God. And, and in other words, he's saying, they don't care about your well-being. They don't care about your soul. It's all self-serving for them. It's all so that they can prevail, so that they can be number one, so that they can be top dog so they can be right. It's all about them and not about God. And what they've done is they have, is, is they have been so focused on beating out the competition and being number one, they forgot about the purpose, which is Jesus Christ. They forgot the whole purpose of it all. And, and, uh, and you know, and I was thinking too, well, how does this manifest in our world today? How does the church see it today? Well, uh, one word, denominations. It's the exact same thing that goes on. Because what, and I'm not going to knock denominations because denominations in themselves are not bad. 
that. And I'm going to tell you why. Because each person is different. And each person worships God in a different way. Each person experiences God in a different way. And the way denominations are supposed to be is designed so that people who worship and experience God one way can worship and experience God. And people who worship and experience God another way can. And they can all coexist and live together and love together and all be Christians. That's how it's supposed to work, but it don't work. Because we turn it into a competition. We lose our focus. And our focus is not on Christ anymore. It becomes focused on the denomination. It becomes focused on the group. It becomes focused on the church, the local church or whatever. And the focus is not on Christ. And then we'll want to argue and go back and forth with one another. And and want to try to convince other people that our way is right and they're wrong. And and we'll do it all while we're trying to help them. We're trying to share the gospel. No, you're not. You're trying to make yourself, um, raise yourself up and, and knock them down is what you're trying to do. If you you want to share the gospel, share the gospel. And, and so, and, and but that's what we get into, and that's what he's, that's really what he's talking about here. And so, and the one thing that, that I hope that anybody that walks through these doors can understand, regardless of what church they belong to, or they may not even belong to a church, they need to be feel welcome, they need to feel loved, they need to feel accepted, they need to feel like they, that God's people love them, and God's people want the best for them, and that the gospel is, is what they receive when they come here. It should shouldn't be a talk about the Nazarene church or about this church or about that church. We should be talking about God. We should be talking about Christ. That's the purpose of it. That's why we come is to talk about Christ, is to learn about Christ. And that's the way it should be in every church, every denomination. And we should all get along together. We should all cooperate with one another because it's going to take all of us to make it through this thing. We're all designed to work together because we have the same mission. But when we get off mission and we get focused on other things, which is what the devil wants us to do, and then we run into all these other issues, that's what we see it manifest in the church today. It's because we, it's because we can't get along. And we can't work with one another. We need to get along and we need to work with one another. The God wants to send revival to God's church, but God can't because the church can't get it together. God wants to revive the church, but the church needs to get its act together so that God can do that. And, and, that, and you know, that's what we have to do. And it, when the church gets its act together, that means that each one of us has our act together. And each one of the people in the other church, and that church, all the different churches. But we need to be working together instead of making a mess out of things. But that motivation there, and this motivation, and see this drive that separates people, separates churches, separates denominations, that drive is there by Satan. Satan is behind all that. He's kind of the orchestrator behind all that. And his, and his goal is to divide people. You know, it's divide and conquer. That's what his goal is. And he says, and then what he does, he alienates people. He says, they want to alienate you from us so that you may be zealous for them. And see, that's what Satan does. He wants to alienate people from God. He wants to alienate Christians from one another because it's much easier for him to attack you if you're alienated and you're out on your own. If you're just kind of going your own way and you're out there trying to make it on your own, he can attack you much easier than if you're in a group of other Christians that are praying with you and praying for you and watching out for you and, and, and got your back, as, as I like to put it. You know, you've got, we've got to have that. We've got to be able to exist that way. And it's not just the people within this church. It's every church working together and having each other's back. Is the way we need to look at this thing because he's trying to divide us. And he is dividing the church. He's dividing Christians. Christians left and right. And then what you do is, and this is what we see in all this uh, ultra-liberal, what they call liberal theology and all this ultra-liberal stuff, is what he's doing is he's dividing the church and he's dividing people out and they're following these doctrines that don't make a lick of sense and then what they do is they bring other people with them and then they become zealous about it and they start to talk about it and spew this stuff and all these things that are going on and they say, oh, you know, this is right in your way for all this stuff and it divides the church and causes the division. We don't need to be divided. We need to be unified as a body of Christ. The body is unified and the body works together and that's how we, we do this thing. And, and so we need to open our eyes and recognize what the enemy is trying to do and we need to, we need to stay on message and we need to stay on mission. The message is the gospel and the mission is to carry it out to the world. And we need to stay on that. We need to continue with that and not get off track onto these other things that have nothing to do with the gospel of Jesus. Because
because when we get all off track with that stuff, we, we wind up in a mess and we wind up in trouble. And so, and that's all he's talking about here. And he's talking about that with them, but it's no different 2,000 years later than it is now. We have to be able to do that, to stay on task here. And, and so, but now, and he says we need to be zealous. This is what he says in verse 18. He says, it is fine to be zealous. He says, provided the purpose is good and to be so always and not just when I'm with you. So, two things he says there in that verse. One, it's okay to be zealous. We should be zealous for God. We should be on fire for God. We should be proclaiming the gospel from the rooftops because God has saved our soul and God has delivered us from the gates of hell. We should be uh, on fire about that. We should be excited about that. He says, it's fine to be that way. He says, Provided that the purpose is good. And that purpose is Jesus. That purpose is the gospel. And then the second thing he says, Be so always and not just when I'm with you. So that first one there, I'm going to read you just a few verses that bring that point out. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 19 says, And for me the utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, and therefore I may speak boldly as as I ought to speak. And then in Romans chapter 1 verse 16 he says, I am not ashamed of the gospel. It, it, it drives me crazy when people, uh, they act like they're ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. If you're ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ and you have never received the gospel of Jesus Christ, don't be ashamed of the gospel. Don't be ashamed to share the gospel. It's God's word. Share it with people. But he says, I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is a power of God for the salvation of everyone who believes, first to the Jew and then to the, for the Gentile. And then in Luke chapter 9, this is what Jesus says, If anyone is ashamed of me and my words, the Son of Man will be ashamed of him when he comes into his glory and the glory of the Father and of the holy angels. And that's just what I was saying there. If you're ashamed of God, you're going to run a real good chance. He says, if anyone's ashamed of me and my words, the Son of Man will be ashamed of him. You know, why are we so afraid to share the gospel with people? Why are we so afraid to tell people about Jesus? What is it? Are we afraid they're going to laugh at us? Are we afraid they're going to run us off or something? Are we afraid they're going to do something to us? They can't do nothing to you, regardless of what they say or what they do. They can't do anything to you and your soul. Share the gospel with them. It may help them. They may learn something. They may be completely turned off and go the other way, but it'll sink in. And they'll hear what you've got to say. And there may come a time when that is brought back to their memory and they remember what you said to them. And you may be responsible for the salvation of their soul because you took that one extra step to share the gospel with them. And, and so, and he says, speak boldly. and Don't be ashamed. Don't be afraid. He says, but make sure that the purpose is good. Make sure that you're sharing the gospel, not for your own glory, not for your own uh, own self, but make sure you're sharing it for Jesus. Make sure that you're responding to the Holy Spirit. Make sure you're doing it all within God's will, is what he's saying there. And that's what he gets into with this second part. When he, when he says, uh, and you're to do it always, and not just when I am with you. And that's the part that stings just a little bit. And I think we've all seen people like it. We've all, we may have done it that way before. We get people that uh, um, on Sunday morning, oh, they're on fire for God. Ooh, raise their hands and shout. They may even run to or in the aisles. But as quickly as they turn it on, when they get out the church door, they turn it back off. And that's the only zeal for God that you see out of them. Or, 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 and the reason they're doing it is they want to impress everybody else that's around them in the church. They don't want to, they don't, they're not doing it for God. They're wanting to impress the other people around them. Or, or, or when uh, you find people and they're having a conversation with a, with, with a preacher or something, and, and oh, it's all glowing in religious words and religious talk, but as soon as they're out of their sight, boop, they turn it back off. You can't turn off God like that. You can't turn off the Holy Spirit like that. If, if the Holy Spirit is in you and, and comes from out of you, you can't just turn it off. It's part of who you are. It's part of what you're made up of. And you can't just turn it off. You can't. You know, and it's a, and what, they're just puffing themselves up, to be honest with you. You know, another example I put in here was, uh, you know, you're having this big revival with the big speaker or, or uh, your district superintendent or whatever. Oh, you're there every, every service. Every time the doors are open, you're there, you're on the front row and you're, you're soaking it up. But, then, but when it's all over, you go out the door and nobody sees you till the next year. 
What's going on with that? You're not full of the Holy Spirit. You're full of yourself is what you're full of. And you need to get, get right with God if you're doing those things. Because you're not where God wants you to be. I'm going to read you a couple of verses that, share, that shares this with us. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 18, Paul tells us this. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. Don't get filled up with liquor and get filled with yourself. Get filled up with the Holy Spirit. He says, speak to one another with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Sing and make music in your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's what I'm talking about. If you're filled with the Spirit, then these things are going to come out of you. You're going to make music in your heart to the Lord. You're going to uh, talk to each other with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. And everything is going to flow. It's going to be a reflection of God. And you're going to do your best to to be a good reflection of God. And then the last one I want to read, uh, last verse, Jeremiah chapter 20, verse 9 says this. And I love this verse. It says, But if I say I will not mention him or speak any more in his name, his word is in my heart like a fire. It says, A fire shut up in my bones. I am weary of holding it in. Indeed, I cannot. God's word, if you are saved and sanctified and full of the Holy Spirit, God's word is something that's shut up in your bones and you can't contain it. It's got to come out. You've got to tell somebody about Jesus. You've got to share the gospel with somebody. You've got to. It just, it just becomes who you are. And you can't contain it. And, and if you can turn it on and turn it off, then, then you probably turn it on and turn it off something that ain't real. It should be on all the time and on full blast. And don't worry about it running out. Don't worry about running the batteries down because God will recharge them every time. You turn it on, turn it up all the way and let it go. Let it rip. Because that's the way we're, we need to be. So, that's all my scriptures for tonight. I don't even know where to go with it from there because I've done everything that I think God wants us to do. But I want us to examine ourselves and I want us to understand and I want us to look and see to make sure that, that we are sharing the gospel with other people, that our motivation is, is we're motivated for God and we're motivated to share the gospel not because of ourselves, not because of God. That we're not wrapped up in, in promoting ourselves or promoting our church or promoting our denomination, but we're going to be promoting Christ. And that we're working with other people and we're, and we're loving other people and we're sharing with other people because that's what it's all about. That's what we need to be looking at. So I'm going to ask you. I'm going to ask you. i got to calm down here. I'm, I'm, <laughs> what's your motivation? Whew, what is your motivation tonight? Are you motivated by Jesus or are you motivated by yourself? That's what we need to look at. Are we motivated by Jesus or are we motivated by ourselves? Who are we serving tonight? Are we serving God? Or are we serving ourselves? That's what I'm talking about. That's all I'm talking about tonight. Are you, are you being zealous for the Lord all the time? Or just when other people are looking? Just when other people are watching? Just when other people are around? Because that makes all the difference in the world. That, that's how you are able to gauge and to know whether or not what you got is the real deal or if you're just going through the motions. I'm just going to give us a minute just to reflect where you're at. Just, everybody just close your eyes and just pray or, and just reflect, meditate, whatever you want to do. I, you just listen to God and just take just a moment. Father God, we come one more time and I just thank you for this time. I thank you for this service. I thank you for uh, your word and I thank you for blessing each and every one of us tonight, Father. I'm just going to ask you tonight, Father, to put your hand on Rose tonight, Father, and just touch her body tonight, Father, and just give her the physical healing that she desires, that she needs tonight, Father. And I just ask you to help her tonight, Father, and just be with her and just to also, Father, to minister to her soul and her spirit tonight, Father, and just uh, lift her up, Father, and just give her relief, Father, not only physically but spiritually, Father, and just uh, Give her the comfort that we all seek, Father, and just to help all of us, Father. Any Anybody here tonight, Father, that is hurting in their body tonight, I just ask you to touch them tonight, Father, and just ask you to touch our souls and be with us this week and just help us, Father, as we go about to glorify you in everything that we do and all that we say, Father. Let it be a reflection of you. And we just thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.